Okay, I'm camped at a beach off quite a ways from town and my battery's gone. And I've kind of known it was going. Now you can test a battery with a tester and it will tell you if the battery's bad, but there's one thing that can happen that a tester can't test for. And that is an internal short in the battery, which I believe is what mine has. And the only way to know is because what that's like is it's like having a leak in the battery. And so overnight it will drain down. And in the morning it'll be like dead or close to dead it'll, or it'll lose its power. As soon as you ride it a little bit, the, the vehicle's charging system charges the battery up. And then if you charge it, you can put a tester on it and it will read fine. But when it sits overnight, and I've known this was going bad, and this morning, I pushed the button to try to start it and it had good power so I tried to charge something and that killed it completely. So I am a long way from anything. Um, the ocean is behind me. You can see there's nobody out here on this little dirt road. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my camp up and looking like somebody's in it. Okay, now I'm going to leave it here with my bike and everything. Obviously, I can't take the bike. And I'm going to grab this here battery, right? And I'm going to walk it into town and try to get a charge on it. If I can get a ride on the way, I'll be happy. But, you know, this isn't my first rodeo with this kind of thing. I had one that's a really good story where I lost it. I lost actually the starter. Anyways, that's a whole other story. But so that's what it entails. Make the camp look like I'm still here. Grab that heavy ass battery and start walking. And um, the phone don't work here. I would call John and see if he can scrounge up some jumper cables and come up here maybe. But um, the phone doesn't get any signal at all where I am. So anyways, that's what it is. Throw the battery under my arm, start walking. thinking today that you got to do something nice for somebody so I'm helping you out man yeah bro you I'm telling you I'm not helping you you're helping me we're having a cruise all over the place looking for this mechanic the guy moved this is a tire oh, shit, man tire shop it's a long walk you might have to walk back mechanic moved so we're trying to find. no he's got to open the door this is my uh 
fifth my fifth. I can't get out without help here unless I climb out the window. What we got? <laughs> this is what we gotta go. Well, I got two hours to wait. <clears throat> One of them's probably already passed. I don't know if you can see the oceans beyond me. But I'm just gonna hang out here at this little coffee shop down by the water for a while. Take a look. Yeah. Drink some coffee. This is it. I'm gonna sit in that chair. Drink coffee and wait. See what happens next. That's what you need to do when you break. It's just wait. Take the... I've had more breakdowns on the road than most of the people I know have had in their life, or, or probably a lot of guys anyway. And, um, you know, the first thing is, is just hurry up and relax, wait, and then try to figure out what the next indicated step is and start, start taking steps. It's not to freak out. Just Roll with it, happens to everybody. Give me a, these guys give me a ride back here. It's 1340, it's viejo Harley. 32 años, 32 years old. See, sí. in the Estados Unidos, viejo Harley Davidson is mucho, muy barato. Si, sí. sí. nuevo no, mucho caro. Si, sí, este bien es... For me, it's transportation. But in the day of today, it's a problem with my battery. <laughs> it's a problem. Gracias, amigos. Gracias. They give me a ride, huh? This is them. Achuga. Quiero mirar esta moto. He wants to look at my bike. <laughs> Muy bonita. Sí. <clears throat> It's bonnet, it's... But esta moto is viejo. Mira, mi quinta is mal. Yes. In Estados Unidos, mi moto is feo. Is it? Si, typical gringa, typical gringo, quieres nuevo moto. A mi carro, uh, autos viejos, si. me gustan. Si? ¿Sí? Motos viejas me gustan. Si? ¿Sí? Si. Sí. Tiene? Tenía una, una internacional. Internacional. Una moto, una camioneta internacional. Camioneta internacional, es muy viejo, no? Muy viejo. 73. International, that's an old one. It's very old, muy, muy, oh, muy bonita. Si? ¿Sí? ¿Es sí. sirve? It runs? Me fui a un barranco. Barranco, sí. Ay. Y nice. es nada. Yeah. Muy bonita la camioneta. Sí. ¿Eh? Necesito yo reparar mi moto y vamos. ¿Desde dónde vienes en la moto? ¿Desde Estados Unidos? Estados Unidos, Canadá, muchos <laughs> México. Muy bonito. No tengo casa. Tengo mi casa de campaña y mi moto. Donde llega la noche sí. a dormir sí. y viajar mucho, muchas aventuras. Sí, como no. Sí. Muy bonita moto. I'm gonna start putting this battery in, but this is what we got. He wanted to see my bike. Stop, give me a ride back here. <laughs> You gotta go. Adios. He was totally cool. Wanted to talk to me about bikes and cars. He's got an international truck. I don't think, I'm not sure what happened with it. I don't think it runs, but they didn't say anything about me being here. They didn't tell me to leave. They gave me a fucking ride. I was hitchhiking. And I stuck my thumb out to get a ride out here. It's a long walk, man, to get this battery back here. And uh, I was like, Oh, it's a cop. <laughs> they stopped and gave me a ride. These guys were totally cool, man. Totally cool. 
So I'm gonna put this battery in. Okay, I'm gonna tell you guys that this motorcycle has two batteries in it, and I'm gonna tell you why. Um, some people think that affects my charging, because I charge computers and batteries and phones and everything off my fucking bike. Even when I go to bed, I'll throw a lot. You can't charge a, a computer, but you can charge a tablet. I'll throw the thing in there, plug it in, go to bed, and in the morning the bike will start right up, even before the second battery. So it worked fine before it. If you want to try these things, I suggest trying them someplace where you have access to a charger or jump on your bike. If you want to start trying to charge things, try it at home. Plug things in. If you try and run the battery dead, you can charge it anyway. But the reason I have two batteries is because I had a SNS V111 engine in here for a while, and that thing would not, if it didn't start up right away, the battery went dead really fast. And so, like on cold mornings when I was camped out somewhere, it would go dead on me right away and I'd be stuck. So my solution was to put a second battery under the seat, which I will show you in a minute how that works. But when I took that motor out, I don't need it anymore. But the reason is that I kept it is because I've been stuck more times than I could count with bad batteries in places. Well, now I don't have to because there's two. So I just check them every once in a while. And um, if one of them's bad, I replace that one. So the one of them's a Sportster battery and I can usually tell when the main battery's gone out because the Sportster battery won't charge it, won't start the bike as well as um, the big battery. Which I think the big battery's the one that went out on this. Actually it doesn't even have the right battery and it's got a soft tail battery in it that somebody gave me. The bagger battery's bigger. <laughs> but it was a used soft tail battery and it's the main battery that's in here. But I think it got an internal short like I was talking about earlier. And so overnight, it's going dead. And so I believe this, that the small battery is good. And so what I'm going to do is disconnect it at night. See, the problem is I can buy a battery here, but all I can get is a water battery that doesn't fit. It's the wrong size, but it'll work. But, I got, but it ain't cheap. So I got to spend a lot of money on that. And then when I get back across the fucking border, I'll have a battery and all the money spent instead of buying a good battery, the right battery, when I get up there which I would advise buying from Harley. For some years now, the batteries seem to have gone bad. Um, I used to buy auto parts store batteries. They would come with a year warranty, last about two years. And then they started coming with like a month or two month warranty and that'd get like nine months out of them. And they were fucking going out all over the place. I seen this in some of the shops I was, that I have friends, you know, I work on my bike in people's shops sometimes. I started seeing this happening there. So people kept telling me, go to Harley, buy a battery there, go buy a battery. And so finally I did. And it turns out that, you know, that cost like 30 bucks more, at least last one I bought. And it comes with a year warranty and lasts about two years. So that's what I've had to do. This Sportster battery, I put it in here. It is a Harley battery. And I'm going to show you where it goes. There's a spot that it'll fit in on these older bikes, these older frames. And I'll show you where it is. Now, there's the battery. Okay, there's a spot under the seat where there's enough room to put one. And what I did sometime back was I bolted this piece of wood through the back fender. And it's kind of hard to get it in there and uh, you got to play with it. And I need both hands. But I'll show you once I get it in. And it just has the, the battery cables are hooked to each other. And that's all it is. There are two batteries hooked up, made into one, hot to hot, cold to cold. If you hook them in series, it doubles the voltage. You don't want to do that. So just all the uh, boy, it still turns the starter over real good when both batteries are good. So I'm going to slide it in there, and I'll show you when it's in. If I had a newer bike, I might consider looking for someplace else if I could to have a second battery because I haven't had to be stuck with a bad fucking battery since I have two of them. Because one goes out, and I ride on the other one. Hello, guys. Okay, there it is. And I just got these wires. I'm going to hook them up and see if this thing turns over. And once I get it running, it'll charge the other battery and I'll be good. And what I'm going to do tonight is I'm going to unhook the two. Because one of them, I believe it's an internal short because that's the symptoms I'm getting. And one of them's draining the other. So I'm going to unhook them from each other because one's I'm sure is good and the other one's bad. Unless they both went out at the same time, I doubt it. Internal shorts are a little unusual, but I've had quite a few of them. So I'm gonna do that, hook it up, see how it works. It runs. I'm gonna take it for a little ride, bring it back, pack up. Okay, now them cops, they was cool as hell. 
to give me a ride and back down this road helped me out quite a bit. It's a really long walk. You know, and then they left. They didn't say anything. I don't, I doubt I'm camped illegally or legally. I don't know that I'm camped illegally either, but I mean, there's a couple of campgrounds right down the road, right? But this is my personal experience. I'm never trying to say that like Mexico is safe. I've not personally have not found it to be any more dangerous than the United States, personally. It's been my experience and I've been coming a long time. Maybe it is, but I ain't seen it. And, uh, but Mostly people leave each other alone rather than making up a bunch of rules about what a person has to do and not do And as long as they're not stepping directly on somebody's toes, they tend to just leave leave them alone Kids playing in the streets riding their ATVs at night down the street, you know They just leave each other alone and they're not strung out on safety the whole safety thing when they started the be safe thing We didn't used to have that in the US and now, you know and they started it because people who are afraid will give up freedom for the perceived idea of more safety. Because we didn't used to be like that and you know they haven't used that problem in here as much and so as I seen it taking sinking into our culture I was like no don't do that and people are like no be safe be safe be safe I'm like I worked a ridiculously dangerous job when I was a young man it was like being a steel worker nobody ever said be safe and I lived so you know, I don't know if you've noticed, but it's been my experience that the people I've known who live very safe lives and the people that take chances, I don't really see any difference from one or the other living longer or one getting maimed sooner. I got a friend who's a stuntman. We used to work together, and he went on to become a motorcycle stuntman back when I was in my early 20s. And uh, I seen him a few years ago. He does a bunch of stunts for Hollywoods and movies and shit. His name's Monty Perlin, if you ever look him up. he's Anyway, he's broken a bunch of bones and stuff, but he's still alive. But his brother, Joe, Joe died a long time ago in a boat, a fishing accident when the boat sank. So, you know, I've just not seen it. <laughs> I don't know how I got off on that rant, but I just, safety, 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 be afraid of germs, be scared of this, be scared of, um, don't walk around at night, you know, be afraid of everything. We didn't used to be that way. We weren't like that. Naturally, that ain't how we are. That's been made really works well and if uh, if you're curious about how well it works look up Edward Bernays he was the nephew of Sigmund Freud he molded our country using pro he wrote a book about it. he's a big mouth now in 1928 his book came out I had to ask myself, is this stuff affecting me? My answer was yes. And I, don't, I want to know about it. I don't want to deny it. I want to know <laughs> so, that I don't, so I don't have to follow it. In any case, bike's working, and I'm out of here. Let's have a look at my beach. My house. This cat's been here a few days. They're from Canada. A lot of refugees leaving Canada coming here. Must be a couple, huh? Said we got a little surfer going here.
Pipes are kind of rough, huh? This is it. In conclusion to this little problem, which is now fixed, I want to say that I never did test either battery. Um, what I did do was when I got home, I unhooked the small battery from the system. And then in the morning, I pushed the starter and the battery was dead. That was the big battery was hooked up to the motor. Okay, and then I hooked the small battery up and it started. So obviously the small battery was good. The big one was the one that was draining the power. So um, when you have a battery that's going dead overnight, there's two things that can cause it. One is of course the internal short that I had here. The other one can be a short in your wiring, which I've never had happen. So it, it must not be that common, but there's a simple test for that. That means that overnight there's a there's a short in a bit water in a wire somewhere that is slowly draining that battery overnight. Okay, the way you test that's very simple. You take the hot lead off the battery, the hot wire, and you touch it to the post and you pull it away really slowly. It's best if you do it in the dark. It's you can see it yet easier and you pull the wire away really slowly and if you see a spark jump there's a short now on a bike like this one you have a little teeny bitty spark that you can see if you look really close but that's only because the radio has a constant hot wire going to it that keeps the time and the channel set on it but on any bike without a radio you should get absolutely nothing and so I didn't even bother checking for that because I've never had it happen before, but I replaced the large battery and the problem is fixed. So pff, I guess I could have tested it, but there's no test for an internal leak anyway. I've tried it before. As soon as it's charged up, it, even a load tester tests it good. But overnight, but the next morning, that sucker's dead. So in conclusion, that's what I did.